Hey everybody, welcome to 30 Days with Jake. I'm Jake and this is my cigarette free challenge. If you enjoy these videos, please click that like button, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below if you have any questions or anything you'd like to say, anything you'd like to, to share with me. So today is day number seven and it's my second day off of cigarettes. So again, I was feeling the migraines yesterday, last night, and you know, feeling tired, feeling tense, feeling annoyed, short-tempered, short, short-wired, short feeling angry. My eyes, the eyes, just very, very swollen. But I'm excited and I'm ready to, to move on from this bad habit, from this addiction. So today's video and cigarette of the day is dedicated to my mom. Estela Erlinda Paredes Mondragón. I said it right. EHPM. Wonderful yeah, listening to all of you. Go, Daniel. Crazy memories, huh? Sometimes I say I wish I would still have those, them little, you know? Yeah, little. All right, so what you're listening to is a song that my mom sang in their family band, The Heirs, with this song titled, The New Jerusalem. So, my mom passed away February 18th, 2013, so over five years ago now. And um, I know I'm trying to, you know, cigarettes, right? So, I'm pretty, yeah, like I, it's been a while, like, I don't really remember, but I, I'm pretty sure me and her have had talks, you know, where I'd come in smelling like smoke, cigarette smoke, and she'd kind of be like, oh, mijo. Well, she didn't have an accent, but she'd be like, oh, mijo, mijo. You know, she'd be like very sad and stuff. Like, for those who don't know, my mom, she, she had breast cancer. She fought for, I believe, seven years. It was uh, stage four when we found out, but she kept fighting and uh, she went into remission and it came back and again remission, it came back. I don't really know the full story, I don't really know what exactly went on. Um, I just know that she'd be okay and then she would get worse and then she would have the chemo and yeah, you know, seeing her lose her hair. Um, I remember that my dad, he got the clippers and he just he just started, you know, shaving her head. I, I remember one of those times, I remember that my dad and I also shaved our heads too. I think it might have been the first time that my dad shaved my mom's head. And I think she only lost her hair like twice or three times. I don't remember. But I remember the first time we did it and then my dad and I... I think it was me. I think it was me. I don't think my dad, maybe like one time he did it, but there were like three Octobers that I shaved my head. At least three. It might have been four. I think it was three. Three Octobers where I shaved my head for breast cancer awareness. Um, it was just for the month of October, and then I'd grow up back out. Um, yeah, I've got my issues with... Uh, with organizations and, and I'm not really gonna mention those here in the video but I just I recommend you guys doing your research this is not a cancer well actually yeah cigarettes is cancer I don't think cigarettes cause breast cancer though. I mean it's like all cancers right so so I mean I don't know but it's a cancer video so Do you smoke cigarettes for a long for a long time according to who are those guys according to CDC 
if you smoke cigarettes, you're gonna die of cancer. And if you get cancer and you get chemo, it really sucks because you get really sick. Like, it's bad. It's bad for you. It's, it, it sucks for those watching you. Um, so you have that to look forward to unless you just want to suffer with cancer and be like Walter White and, and go make meth and sell it and then die at the end. I love that show. I've yet to watch um, Breaking Soul. What is it? Better Call Soul. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about my mom for a little bit. Like, this is dedicated to her. The only other time that I mentioned her in a video was one that's on my other channel called Four Years. If you look up Jacob on Dragon, I don't know how to do the link stuff. You know, if you click on this here, I don't know what's going to be there. But. Maybe I'll find somebody who can do it. Maybe over here. If you click on the link up here in this area. If not, then I'll just I'll just edit that stuff out. My hand gestures. If you click on my She she was a wonderful woman. She was my mom was was an amazing woman. And I just wanted to tell a little bit about her. She grew up in the church and I mean my my grandpa was a pastor my uncle was a pastor a preacher you know a pulpit speaker and they were raised very it was it was a very strict uh, uh, relationship environment it was a very very restrictive very um, you know, they weren't allowed to do a lot of things, which, you know, if you're someone who, you know, you follow the Bible or you're a Christian or you're a Catholic or a Muslim or whatever it is, whatever beliefs you have, and you're, you're fully into them, like, there are going to be rules and laws that, that you follow, you know, and, and some follow differently than others, you know, some follow literally, some follow figuratively, you know, so... It was a very strict uh, uh, upbringing for my mother. And, you know, she didn't date anybody until my dad. And she was 31, 32. My dad was 26. Well, when they met, she was probably 29, 30. And my dad was probably like 24, 25. It's a cute little story. I, I'll include that maybe in another video. But I just wanted to say that, that my mother... You know, she she was she was a she was a woman. She was very strong. She was very independent. She was very vocal about her beliefs, about her positions, her opinions. She was a very hard woman. Very loving, though, to us, to to my sisters and I. She was judgmental. She had her issues. She had her problems. She had her mistakes. I only mention this because she was human. Because she was someone I loved very deeply. You know, and it's been five years, and I miss her a little bit. My mother, because of her environment, because of her upbringing, her, her surroundings, her personality, you know, she became a certain woman. And as you get older, you get more solidified in your beliefs, more solidified in your thinking. It gets harder to change. You know, so so it, it was, it was, she was difficult at times, as we all are, right? Am I right? We are all difficult to each other, to our family, our friends, those we love. You know, we can sometimes be a-holes. We can sometimes be jerks, you know, and I've definitely been that way to my friends, to my sisters, to my to my family, my, my cousins, my uncles, aunts, grandparents. You know, I've had moments where I look back and I, I feel shame. You know, I feel regret, you know, but, but I, I look at my mom and... I see her as a human being, but she loved us. She loved us. She'd come home for work. We were her world, you know, and, and we saw her every single day. And we got to see her become the woman that she ended up becoming. You know, the changes that she made all throughout her, all from what I heard all throughout her life and, and from my dad and from my uh, view watching her as I was young a young child to 
to adulthood to when she passed, you know, she went through a lot of changes and that cancer, that really humbled her. That really humbled her because of the kind of person that she was, because of the kind of person that, that she believed herself to be, the limits that, that she put on herself. Having that kind of suffering, it really makes you look at life. It really makes you reflect on your, your behavior, on your actions, on your past, on your present situation on what you want for your life, for your future, for your family and your friends. So that's why I believe that suffering is so important to a person's growth. Because if we don't feel pain, if we don't suffer, then what are we learning? If we're continuously successful since, since childhood, if we win at everything and we've never lost, we've never failed, what is it that we learn? We learn nothing. If you're raised with, with, if you're raised with your family having tons of money and you never know what it's like for them to lose it, you never know what it's like to hit rock bottom, you never know what it's like to live in another person's shoes who has no money or who goes days with being negative in their bank account, who goes days hungry, then you don't learn what it's like to be that kind of person. You don't learn what it's like to save. You don't learn what it's like to... You, you take for granted. You take for granted. If you're always successful, you take for granted the things around you. You take for granted your abilities, your skills. And, and you can either, you can either, the only way you're going to grow through pain and through suffering is if you build this mental attitude. If you build this mental attitude that you can get through it, that that's not going to limit you. If you look at the suffering that you're going through and you feel sorry for yourself, then you're not going to grow, you're not going to learn, you're not, you're not open to the opportunity to learn. And you're just going to feel stuck. You're just going to feel alone. You're going to feel confused. And I feel for you. But I can't make the choices for you. I can't decide for you. I can only decide for myself. And right now, for myself, I have this bad habit that I'm trying to overcome. I have to do it for myself. No one can do it for me. All we can do and all we can give is love. Love to each other. Support and encouragement. That is what love is. That is a part of love. But if we're not willing to move past the limiting factors to our body, to our mind, to our spirit, then we understand the point of not being happy. But I can tell you now that I'm here making changes in my life. I'm here overcoming. I'm here learning and failing and you can do it too because I'm here for you and I support you and I encourage you in your journey in your fight against the bad habits in your fight against the bad things of this world the obstacles the battles the trials that we all go through that we all endure I understand so finishing off with my mom She was a very brave woman having gone through what she went through and having fought for as long as she did. And she is an inspiration to me. She is a motivation to me. She is my motivation. And even though I miss her, I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I'm not wallowing in self-pity. I would want to make her proud if she were still here. Just the same that I want to make my dad proud. I want to make my family proud. I want to make my, my, my friends proud. And I'm proud of the woman my mom was when she passed. Because she was humbled. And she became perfect. So, thank you for watching.
Thank you for encouraging me and supporting me, all you out there with your voices that are reaching out to me through messages. Thank you so much. I love you. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. Share. Comment. Tell me what you're feeling, what you're going through. Tell me what your bad habits are. Tell me what you're trying to move past, move forward. Tell me how you're failing. Tell me what, what you liked about this, what you didn't like about this. If you're going through something painful, if you're going through suffering, please talk to somebody. That is the most important thing we can do. Do not hold it in. Do not cover it up. But talk, with, talk to somebody about it. Talk to somebody about what you're going through. So I'm here. I'm waiting. I'm ready. I'll see you tomorrow. My mom, Estela Erlinda Paredes Mondragón. I can never say that right. Mondragón. 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 Gón. Gón.